I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I am not <clears throat> not in the greatest of moods tonight. I started off having a really good day today. Um, I had some meetings today that I'll tell you about here in a little bit. And then when I was at the gym tonight, which I was really excited about because I got some good news that um, I'm not gonna need any surgery on my arm, so I'm clear to go back to the gym. I'm at the gym having a good time. And uh, one of my buddies sends me a text, asks me if I've seen my email yet. I had not yet seen my email, so of course due to his prompting, I went ahead and checked. When I checked my email, I found out that uh, tomorrow afternoon when I thought I was going to be getting off my shift and going home, I don't actually get to do that. Tomorrow, when I get off work, I get to stay again and do it all again. Um, the reason for this is because there's a staffing shortage. So due to staffing shortages, I have to stay over. Uh, me and three other of my friends, and this is happening in um, probably most of the precincts across the entire city. The frustrating thing about this is not that I have to work a little extra. Um, there's times that in my job, it just kind of sucks. You know, you chose to be the police, you gotta do police things. Uh, we've had a couple of elections here recently. Uh, some of those elections have been kind of contested. Uh, they've drawn some uh, protests and some riots. Um, we So now when there's an election, we have to work longer shifts. Uh, last summer, there were some riots that happened. Uh, there were people smashing windows, lighting buildings on fire, pulling people out of cars and beating them up. Um, due to that, we had to work some longer shifts and we also lost some days off. But that's not like what's happening now. Uh, what's happening now is something that was easily foreseeable and something that we've been warning about for the last year and a half. And the people we were trying to warn refused to heed our warnings and they were somewhat cavalier about it. Um, a little while back I did a video on this channel and I was talking about why police officers are leaving major cities. When I was reading through that story, I spoke about a police officer who I know personally. He's a very young guy. He's in his early 30s. Um, he wanted to be a police officer his entire life. He came to Columbus, Ohio to be a police officer. Due to um, the way he was being treated, I guess he didn't really like having rocks and frozen water bottles thrown at his head. And he didn't like the fact that while he was having rocks and frozen water bottles thrown at his head, the mayor of the city that he worked for was standing behind him talking to news cameras and uh, telling the media that he was racist and that all of his friends and co-workers are racist. So he decided that he wasn't going to put up with that anymore and uh, he wanted to do something else with his life. When I read that story, the reporter spoke to the mayor who's in charge of that department and asked him, hey, you know, you have officers leaving your department at record rates. What do you think about that? And he was, his response to that was, well, that's fine. That gives them the opportunity to go be the police somewhere else. Well, now we're seeing a situation and there, I saw multiple news articles published about this earlier this week, that there's a legitimate staffing shortage in the city that I work. Um, there were there was a story about a woman who had to wait for hours after being carjacked and armed at gunpoint. Um, in the story, they talked talk to a lot of people and they attributed that long wait to staffing shortages. So my question is, what's going to happen when all the, the, the police decide that they want to go be the police somewhere else? eventually there's going to be no more police and we're getting dangerously close to that level now. Um, like I mentioned before, staying over and working a little bit extra because there's an emergency is not a big deal. I've stayed over two times in the last two weeks to help out second shift because they were short. I understand that uh, people have family things that come up and stuff that they got to do. What's happening tomorrow is something that's very different. 
Uh, it's a shortage that's being felt across the entire city. And in order to fill that shortage, a lot of officers are going to have to stay over. Um, working a, well, I'll just say this, <clears throat> if these shortages continue, what's going to happen is that more and more officers are going to be forced to work longer and longer shifts and lose days off. There, we've, already, we've already seen officers losing days off. So if you're having to work 12 to six hour, 16 hours a day, six days a week, and you have to do that wearing a duty belt and bulletproof vest, everybody's well aware that an officer who works 25 to 30 years wearing that bulletproof vest, who's working 40 hours a week, um, it's very, very common for them to retire with back problems and hip problems and, and all that kind of stuff. Imagine the health problems that the officers are gonna start having if they're having to work six days a week and having to work 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, that is something that is not sustainable. And when I was thinking about that, it reminded me of the book Atlas Shrugged and a conversation that happened in the book Atlas Shrugged. So I want to read you, this is a conversation between two people. If you saw Atlas, the giant who holds the world on his shoulders, if you saw that he stood, blood running down his chest, his knees buckling, his arms trembling, but still trying to hold the world aloft with the last of his strength. And the greater his effort, the heavier the world bore down upon his shoulders. What would you tell him? I, I don't know. What, what could he do? What would you tell him? I would tell him to shrug. Right now, all across our country, and specifically where I work, <clears throat> We have a group, a ever shrinking group of police officers that are being asked to do more and more and more. Right now, those officers are standing with the weight of the city bearing down on their shoulders. The harder they strain, the heavier it seems to get. There's people who don't feel safe leaving their homes because they know that there's not as many people like me out on the street as there was yesterday. They know that we're being overburdened and that the level of crime is so high that we're unable to respond to many of their needs. It's a very sad situation for the city. And unfortunately, the conversation just like was in Atlas Shrug is a conversation that I'm having with a lot of police officers on a daily basis. Often they're coming to me and they're saying, I don't know how you do it day in and day out. I don't know how you're still even here. Um, cause they're struggling just to get up and put on their uniform and come to work every day with all the stuff that the officers are having to deal with. It's very difficult to put on the uniform every day <clears throat> have to deal with things that we deal with and do all this while the people who you work for are saying unbelievable things behind your back. There's a couple of really sad things that I'd like to point out. Um, one of them I mentioned before that I had a really good meeting today. I got to meet with a lot of a group of young people who all wanted to be police officers. They were all too young to join the academy, but uh, they're very interested in the process. And uh, each of them told me their story about where they came from and what's made them want to become a police officer. Luckily, they didn't ask me my take on it because I cannot in good conscience in the environment that we're in tell another person that they should be a police officer. It's really sad because I really love this job. Uh, this is a job with that is like no other job out there. Uh, the things that you get to see and the things that you get to experience and the lives that you touch in the course of this job are unmatched in any profession on the planet. You know, like the things that I've done 
since I became a police officer. I'm not being hyperbolic when I say I've saved countless lives. I know that to be a fact. There's people whose lives I have saved with emergency medical treatment. I've applied tourniquets to people. Uh, there was a guy who uh, I found in a pool of blood bleeding from both of his arms. Um, it was a, it looked like a faucet had been turned on and I put tourniquets on both of his arms and saved his life. When detectives responded to the hospital, they were, he was able to wake up and talk to them. I've saved an unknown number of people with Narcan. I've performed CPR on men, women, and children. I've stood toe to toe with some very dangerous people. I've arrested countless domestic abusers. I've been there in people's worst moments when they needed help the most, and I've been that person that showed up. It's a really strange thing. I don't even know if I can get it out. Um, knowing that, or at least hearing from people, when you showed up and they're telling you that you were exactly what they've been praying for because they thought their world was ending and they were praying to God that they're praying to God for relief and that you showed up and they were confident that you were sent by God. That's what I do on a daily basis. I love what I do, but I'm not sure how much longer I can do it. I'm not sure how much longer the rest of the guys can do it either. Eventually we're gonna to get to a point where either you're gonna change or all of the police are gonna find a way to go be the police somewhere else. Because eventually Atlas is going to shrug.